Thanks to Red Magic for sponsoring this video. This is the Red Magic Nova, which just like the company's smartphones, was built from the ground up for gaming. Meaning you get things on here that you normally wouldn't see on other tablets, like an overclocked version of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, arguably the best cooling system out there with an actual fan, plus software that's been tuned specifically to make the gaming experience better. But the thing that's interesting about this tablet, especially compared to Red Magic smartphones, is even if you never end up gaming on this thing, it still makes for a good tablet, especially at its $500 price point. The screen has a high 2.8K resolution. It's got pretty punchy colors, even though it's not an OLED panel. It goes up to 550 nits of brightness with a crazy 144 Hertz refresh rate, which, you know, isn't something that you can see with your eyes, but it's one of those things that you can kinda sort of feel. And either way, it's way better than the 60 Hertz panels that you get on iPads at similar price points. The sound on here is also top notch with four symmetrical speakers, and then of course, with the high-end performance specs like the Snapdragon chip plus UFS 4.0 and 12 to 16 gigabytes of RAM, it can pretty much handle whatever tasks you throw at it from productivity to multitasking. In terms of battery life, it has a massive 10,000 milliamp hour capacity that charges super quickly to 100% in less than an hour with that 80 watt power brick that's included. And overall, I would say that the build quality on here is solid. It's all metal and it's only 7.3 millimeters thick. So yeah, it kinda ticks a lot of the checkboxes that you wanna see in a tablet. Plus it's got a cool design with the transparent window on the back here and customizable RGB. But Obviously, the main focus here is gaming, and that's the area where it really shines. When you take a look at a benchmark like Wildlife Extreme, it's not just the overclocked Snapdragon chip that helps it get a higher score than any flagship phone, but it's the cooling system with the bigger body, the copper, the heat pipe, and that cooling fan that all add up to a relatively stable frame rate all the way throughout the benchmark. But what's different about the Nova compared to Red Magic smartphones is unlike the phones, the Nova doesn't have an open intake or exhaust for that cooling fan. I was looking all over for it, and it turns out it actually has an internal system where Red Magic uses the extra space on a tablet compared to a phone to circulate the air internally instead. And you know, at least based on that benchmark score, it seems to work well enough while also having the benefit of not only being less susceptible to water and dust damage, but it's also quieter with the system being completely enclosed. But nonetheless, the performance it gives you is real and it translates into games. I've been playing Call of Duty Warzone on here where because the game allows you to uncap the frame rate and set everything to high, the Nova not only performs at over 60 frames per second, but it goes well beyond that, with it hovering somewhere around 90 FPS depending on the scene, which is really impressive. It's the same story with Genshin Impact, where with everything turned up to the maximum, it still gets the highest FPS possible, which is 60 FPS for that game. And you know, I've gotta say, first I was a little skeptical as to the idea of gaming on a tablet because of the form factor, but games just come alive on here in a way that they can't on a phone just because of the bigger screen. Like your fingers don't get in the way and you can see everything clearly, letting you appreciate the visuals like never before. Now, that's not to say that gaming on here is better in every way compared to a phone because there's definitely an adjustment that you have to make where, for example, when I play first person shooter games, I had to up the sensitivity in those games so that way my fingers didn't have to stretch all the way across the giant screen. And you know, at 530 grams, the tablet is obviously heavier than a phone. And unlike Red Magic's smartphones, you don't get those shoulder triggers that I love so much since obviously you wouldn't be able to reach them. For their part though, Red Magic does alleviate some of these drawbacks with their software, where you can remap buttons from one part of the screen to another so you can easily reach them. And you can also use a controller or a mouse and keyboard, even in games that technically don't support it. Which combined with the console mode that launches when you connect it to a TV, it kind of makes the Nova feel like a little console. There's even a joystick mode where you can use the tablet itself as the controller with the gameplay on your TV or the monitor being unaffected. It's pretty cool. But for the most part, I imagine people are gonna wanna use this thing handheld. And you know, that experience, once you get past the weight and you adjust to the form factor, 
is pretty great, since the screen on here, with its 144Hz refresh rate and 840Hz touch sampling rate, is super smooth and responsive. And while I normally prefer a 4-3 aspect ratio, like on the iPad for tablets, for a gaming tablet, I think the 16x10 aspect ratio actually makes a lot of sense, because it allows games, and movies for that matter, to scale properly without any letterboxing, Plus, it has the benefit of running apps that aren't optimized for tablets without any issues, since it pretty much matches the aspect ratio on phones. Just like with smartphones, you get dual vibration motors for haptics on the tablet, which you don't normally see on things like an iPad. And the speakers on here are also really good. They get both loud and they're full. And because there are four speakers instead of two, even if you block the bottom ones with your palm, you still have the other two. So that way your sound doesn't get completely muffled. Although in some games like Warzone, for some reason the top speakers weren't being used, which was odd because in other games and like in other apps, it was working just fine. So probably just a software bug that needs to be fixed with an update. But one thing that can't be fixed with an update is that the lack of a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which, you know, it's kind of strange that Red Magic opted not to include one because they include one on their phones, which have less physical space. So you would think that they'd be able to fit one in on a tablet, but it is what it is, and obviously, if you really want that, you can always use a dongle. In terms of other features, you have a 50 megapixel camera on the back, so this is the camera and this is the fan. You don't get two cameras, which, you know, it's powered by the Snapdragon ISP, so you get decent photos, especially for a tablet, which for the most part, I don't think people are gonna use that often if they have a phone. And the camera that you will probably end up using more often is the selfie camera, which is a 20 megapixel sensor with three microphones for better audio quality. And then one feature that I'm not sure exactly what it is are these pins here at the bottom, which have magnets built in, but Red Magic doesn't specify what they're for. I assume they have some kind of accessory in the works, like maybe a keyboard or some sort of dock, but obviously you don't wanna make any kind of purchasing decision based off of a feature that might not ever come to fruition. And then as far as the software goes, it's running on Android 14, which, you know, for the most part is pretty clean outside of a few blower apps, although you have the option to disable those. And then while Red Magic has done a good job at polishing their UI over the years, it's still not as polished as something you'd get like on a Pixel. But probably the biggest downside in terms of the software is that the updates, where Red Magic is only promising two years of security patches. But then again, that's how Red Magic is able to deliver all these insane specs at a $500 price point. So if you want a tablet for gaming, or if you just want a high-end Android tablet that doesn't break the bank, then this one could be a solid option. But anyways, that is it for me in this video. Big thanks again to Red Magic for sponsoring this showcase. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.